Well, good afternoon. This video is continuing from some other videos that we've already done. Um, previous videos were on exact values and on the two special triangles that you can see right here. These two special triangles which we use to find exact values and uh, previous videos that also talked about angles in or uh, yeah angles in standard position um, but in this case they're going to be angles that are greater than 90 degrees so let's get to the kind of questions that we're going to see here as this continues from a previous video okay um, here it says what is the exact value of cos 225 or the cosine of 225 that's definitely bigger than 90 degrees no doubt about it okay so I'll draw right here as you recall we have 0, zero degrees I might as well write them in we have 90 degrees 180 degrees and 270 so 225 we're just gonna guess it would be an angle that would come right about over here okay so this would be about 225 degrees Okay, it says what's the exact value and just like the other video, what you're going to do is focus in on this angle right here. Okay, that angle from here to here. That angle is uh, called the related acute angle, as you'll recall. And in order to find this angle, we're going to take 225 and we're going to subtract 180. Okay, and if you do that, you will see that the angle is 45 degrees. The cool thing is, in most math courses, if they ask you for an exact value, the related acute angle in here is usually going to be 45, 30 degrees, which we get right here, or 60 degrees, okay? So once you get used to these kind of questions, they're not going to be so bad. Okay, I'm going to draw a triangle here, and um, I suppose we can just quickly write in the rest of it. This is a 45, 45, 90 triangle, which is this special one right here. Okay, the 45, 45, 90. And the side lengths, the way that they are done is this is one, one, and this, um, the hypotenuse here is root two. Okay, now here it said, what is cos 225? Well, cos 225 cosine of 225 degrees as an exact value is going to be adjacent over the hypotenuse okay one over root two and we're going to leave it like that in some math courses they would teach you how to get rid of a denominator uh, with a radical sign that's called uh, I guess they could use the term rationalizing the denominator but that's another video and it's also something that we're just not going to need to do here. We're allowed to leave it like this in this case. Depends on your math teacher. Some teachers say get rid of that radical sign in the denominator. Then all you do is just multiply the top and the bottom by square root of 2 and that gets rid of it there. But again, here you don't need to do that Okay, in this course. So we're done this question. Except I look in the bottom here and I notice this question down here that says what other angle for cosine would give us the exact same answer. And as I, as I say that, you might have been trying to stop me and I just didn't hear you. We need to really be careful about our signs here, okay? And so what I'm doing is I'm backing up and looking at this answer. There's something I forgot to do. And uh, this is just a video without editing. So I'm just, yeah, mistakes happen and I just skipped over a crucial part of this question. Now there was a video in the past that had to do with the cast rule, so I'm not going to re-explain all of that. But this is the cast rule, just reminding us which which uh, sine, cosine, or tangent, which one of these trig ratios is positive, depending on which quadrant it's in. So all of them are positive here, sine is positive here, tangent here, and cosine here. In this quadrant, which is quadrant three, this is quadrant three, only tangent is positive here. Therefore this answer right here wasn't quite done. We need to have the negative sign there. And the calculator, I'm going to pop that up here, the calculator, if we were to type in cos 225, we should have a negative answer, negative 0 0.707. Okay? And we can confirm that this 
exact value is true, we can go negative 1 divided by the square root of 2. So, I don't know, this calculator I might have to do it like that, yes. Negative 1 divided by the square root of 2, and it's the exact same answer as what we just had. So, the nice thing about this stuff is you can confirm that you're getting the right answer using a calculator. We definitely got this right. Okay, because this is negative, we have to look, and because we're moving on to this question at the bottom here, what other angle for cosine would give us the exact same answer, that can only happen in another quadrant where cosine is negative. So it can't happen in this quadrant, cosine's positive there, all of them are positive here, so can't happen in the first quadrant, it's got to be in this quadrant, okay? So we need to keep the exact same related acute angle, I'm just doing this quickly here, keep the exact same related acute angle just like we did in the other video on how to find two angles that give the same answer. Do your special triangle, 1, 1, root 2. It's looking like a mess here, but I'm just doing this to, to quickly get this question over with. <laughs> well, what other angle for cosine would give us the exact same answer? Well, here we are. Um, cos 225 was this, but also uh, I guess I'm going to use yellow here. From here to here is our principal angle. It's called the principal angle. That is what we are looking for. So what is 180 degrees minus 45 degrees? Okay, well 180 minus 40 is 140 minus another 5, so that's 135. So cos 135, that would be 1 over root 2 and don't forget it's negative. Okay, once again check with your calculator to see if it's true. So 135 and don't forget to say cosine and you get the exact same answer. So see how there's two answers that give the exact same exact value. Okay, I guess the best thing to do is to try this again. So uh, we'll start with the green this time. What is the exact value of sine 240? Well, 240 would be in this quadrant again. Okay, 240 degrees from here to here. That's the principal angle. Um, the related acute angle in here is going to be 240 minus 180. That would give us 60 degrees. And we can draw the rest of our triangle here. That's, this is going to be a 30. I should, I should keep them red. 30, 60, 90 triangle, okay? And if you forget, you can always look back and see that 30, 60, 90 triangle. Across from the 30 is a 1, okay? Across from the 60 is a root 3, and the hypotenuse, which is the longest side, is 2. And you can always remember it's 1, 2, root 3, however, root 3 is smaller than 2. Okay, you can check that on a calculator. This too has to be in the hypotenuse. Just to confirm, it's right there. Okay, it's in the hypotenuse. So, what we can say here is that the exact value of the sine of 240, sine of 240 will be, okay, sine is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, root 3 over 2. Is it positive or negative? C, A, S, T. Only tangent is positive in this quadrant. Sine's going to be negative here. Okay. Now, we've finished that question. Uh, we could quickly verify it, but I think what I'm going to do is just quickly get to the bottom question here. What other angle using sine will give us the exact same answer as sine 240? There's another place in here. Well, where is sine negative? Well, sine is positive in here. So we can't, it can't be there. Sine is positive in here. It's got to be in this quadrant right here. So I'm going to use the yellow one again. Draw our triangle. Here's the 90 degrees. Here's our 60, because you keep the exact same related acute angle as we had before. Okay, here's our triangle. Remember it's 1, 2, and here's root 3. And now we have to ask ourselves, 
what is like it is going to be the same thing um, sine would be opposite over hypotenuse but sine what? What angle is going to be here? Well that's going to be the angle that goes all the way from here to here. If all the way around a circle is 360, what's 360 minus this 60 degrees? That'd be 300. That should also give us negative root 3 over 2. Let's verify things using the calculator. Let's see if sine 240, okay, negative point, here I'll just write it down. Was it 0.25? I'm not going to keep going, but I'm just going that gives us an example of what that was. Okay, now let's do 300. See how it's the same thing? One more thing to verify. Let's check if the square root of 3 divided by 2 is this answer. So, and it's a negative, so um, Oops, clear, clear, there we are. 3 square root, and it's a negative, divided by 2. Do you see how it's the exact same answer as what we have right here? It is. You can push rewind if you don't believe me. That is how you do this stuff, folks. I hope you can practice this and that it starts to become easy peasy after a while. Okay, good luck to everyone. Have a good day.